So let me move on to the uh, next part of the talk. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I also have a lot of thunder and lightning in the background. We um, can hear you, Ajra. We can hear you. Um, so, um, um, so the next talk is about uh, you know the place you want to uh, um, work in, isn't it? So uh, you have a choice. You have a different choice in where you want to work in. So you can decide you want to work for the Ministry of Health. You can decide whether you want to work for the private sector. You can decide whether you want to work for the armed forces. You can decide whether you want to work for yourself and become a, a general practitioner and whether you want to uh, enter um, the academia. So academia by far is the, I think the most challenging uh, uh, career uh, choice. And uh, so you need to then, uh, first of all, think of is this the job for you? And then also think of uh, what jobs are available once you enter an academic uh, career. So when you enter an academic career, your primarily you will be an academic, but uh, then uh, you also got administrative and uh, scientific duties as well. Um, and uh, so it is a multitasking um, uh, job uh, in addition to uh, your clinical work. Um, you may start at different places in this hierarchy of things. You may begin as a pre-intern demonstrator, uh, then you may go and do the internship. Some people also come back after internship and sometimes spend some time as a permanent demonstrators. Then you can uh, enter uh, as a probationary lecturer without any postgraduate qualifications or thereafter you can become a lecturer, uh, then uh, a senior lecturer grade uh, two, grade one, associate professor, professor, senior professor, and of course, um, uh, the chair professor. So the whole system is runs on merit. And of course, um, uh, you can uh, get uh, from here to there, uh, you know, depending on how fast you uh, uh, get through things. Uh, so in my own career, I took um, about uh, uh, 20 years to get from uh, being a pre-intern demonstrator, but going back to internship and then coming back as a probationary lecturer and going all the way up. Um, so um, you can, of course, then decide uh, really which point at which do you really want to come into the system. It's up to you. And um, it doesn't mean that you need to enter as probationary lecturers. But um, I guess uh, entering as probationary lecturers is the most difficult entry point because at that point, uh, you would really need a first class uh, uh, degree with um, uh, a few distinctions and others because these days it's becoming really competitive at that point. However, you can come at a higher level uh, if you've uh, specialized in a particular area, now for example, universities are looking at uh, uh, biomedical and health informaticians and uh, um, uh, there are some of those uh, people with good IT skills are not those who will excel sometimes in clinical disciplines and get first classes and so on. So therefore they have an entry level at a different place uh, that you can aspire for. Um, so, um, at uh, administrative level, you've got uh, you know, units and centers in universities. You can get in and become directors of those. Then you can become heads of departments, deans of faculties, vice chancellors. And then of course, you can also uh, enter various positions in the council of the university grants commission and so on. So there is a lot of administrative jobs. And in addition to these, in this hierarchy, you have the lateral things also, like there are various institutions like the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine and so on, 
Uh, there are our deputy director posts, director posts, and all kinds of things. And then there are special institutions like Institute of Indigenous Medicine and all kinds of postgraduate uh, science institutes and various stuff. Uh, you can become, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, become uh, take on to administrative jobs. And of course, if you are politically connected, maybe uh, even various, uh, uh, you know, politically appointed institutions like National Science Foundations, National Research Councils, and all of those other things where there's some amount of political clout is needed to get into those posts. So essentially, uh, for all of you who have been uh, trained to be clinicians, once you move into um, uh, the academic field, you are also uh, going to be a researcher, teacher, administrator, and so on. And as you go up high in this ladder, you got to, um, uh, you know, your tasks change. So for example, uh, you may be um, uh, essentially a clinician to begin with, but quietly uh, you will of course uh, get administrative teaching and research um, uh, kind of um, uh, you know, uh, roles as well. And of course on top would be the administrative thing. So you're like, there'll be a um, you know, ever expanding kind of uh, uh, you know, responsibilities. And of course, as a clinician, I think there is a difference to um, uh, uh, what a clinician in a university should be, because you've got to become an academic clinician uh, where you are also looking at uh, your clinical work as an opportunity to uh, uh, train uh, your trainees. Uh, so therefore, you may develop special interests and special subspecialized and so on as well as uh, you may also use that um, uh, clinical background to build up your research career. So therefore, uh, it is important to keep that in mind. Another opportunity that you have in uh, the, uh, when you join the university is the basic sciences. So you can develop basic science research. Um, so while being, um, so my interest was, for example, in uh, uh, becoming a clinical geneticist, but that specialty option was not available in the country, but I didn't want to leave the country and become a specialist somewhere else. I wanted to, um, you know, uh, develop the field in uh, our country. And therefore, um, um, uh, while, uh, you know, I entered the academia, developed um, uh, the, um, you know, the background science uh, of it. And if you look at our publications, you will see that and uh, implemented all the basic sciences behind that. That was necessary, of course, also now for us to start the clinical genetics training program. So you would have heard on the chat, I said that after pediatrics, as well as after clin um, uh, adult medicine, you can now subspecialize in clinical genetics. And clinical genetics is the field for the future. And um, so I would uh, in invite all of you to consider uh, the field of gen clinical genetics as a subspeciality that you want to specialize in in the future. Uh, there is also the freedom to do new things. The entire field of biomedical informatics that I spoke to you earlier was developed out of um, the interest of uh, a few uh, of myself and people like Prof. Sean Fernando and a few others. Um, and we, do, we did it out of our passion. And today now we have pioneered a separate speciality. And uh, we in Sri Lanka has the largest number of uh, biomedical and health informaticians in any health system in the world because we've produced more than 250 of them. And uh, we've got uh, you know, once develop, things develop further in the future, we have got the manpower to take things forward. And of course, when you join a university, you've got to work in as a team. Uh, that is very important to realize because, uh, you know, if you don't like a, a, work, a, a place in the Ministry of Health, you can get transfer and go somewhere else. But in the field of, um, uh, in a university, once you join the university, this is for life. So therefore, uh, when you are in a faculty, you must um, uh, get into the habit of getting to know your teachers, talk with your teachers, 
go and meet them uh, you know interact with a little bit of the departments if you are uh, um, uh, thinking of a you know in, uh, pre intern uh, a temporary research assistant or demonstrator post think of joining a department where you think you want to join in the future so that you can really know whether you want to work with these people or not whether they like you and you like them uh, because otherwise you don't want to be in a unfriendly or uh, uh, environment that you don't want to be so that's important to you know grow up in a place where, without conflict and where you can live the rest of your life so how do you go about finding a job i gave you a few ideas before but today the opportunities are expanding in and around colombo we have the university of colombo university of sri jayawardenepura kalania moratuwa and kdu so this itself you are looking at about more than 1000 jobs uh, available uh, in and around colombo itself and then if you start from the north and go to the south you have jaffna rajarata uh, vayamba peradenia sabaragamu eastern and rohuna and of course uh, we also have uvelas uh, which is on the cards so all together you are looking at about i would say more than upwards of uh, 2000 job opportunities in academia in the future uh, so uh, a career in academia uh, will be rewarding there will be uh, you know real opportunities for you uh, in the future and it's august well for all of you so with that thank you very much and i wish you all uh, the very uh, best of luck in your future endeavors thank you vajra for that uh, very comprehensive uh, talk on the university system there are a few questions for you vajra uh, with regard to university uh, they are asking does our final mbbs results affect the selection as a lecturer so basically is asking whether you need classes distinctions and so on yes um, um yeah so if you look at the uh, um uh, so i would actually invite you to uh, go to the university of colombo website and go to the vacancies page and download uh, the uh, circular on vacancies uh, and when you look at that it will be very clear the first preference is given to those with uh, uh, first classes and second uppers and uh, then uh, down the line uh, the other opportunities come so uh, that's why i said like you know to begin with you may want to have those qualifications if you are coming as a professional lecturer because that's the only thing that you have but later on uh, you will also see when you look at those um, uh, vacancy uh, vacancy advertisements you will also see that um, uh, you will also see that uh, um they say uh, they ask for specialist uh, you know special skills as it were so therefore if you you know you may not have any classes uh, and one day they may ask for a transplant surgeon and then you may be a transplant surgeon and uh, uh, so if you are the only one who is uh, uh, even though you may not have a first class in the finals uh, you are now a transplant surgeon and the university is looking for a transplant surgeon and they'll take you in so that is why it's uh, important one other question i would like to focus on is uh, asking sir after finishing internship being a foreign graduate affects joining the university they asking for the foreign graduates uh, are excluded from joining uh no um there are many foreign graduates in our faculties there are many um did you hear me there are many many, uh, many foreign graduates in our faculties there's no restriction <laughs>